it's like staring back into the dawn of humanity this chimpanzee is making a stone tool he has not been taught to do this it is not a trick or performance that one looks pretty sharp his favorite ball is in this box and to get to it he somehow has to cut a rope. His methods are primitive by human standards, but truly astonishing according to the laws of nature. Oh, I see this that. chimpanzee is thinking. He is thinking just like we do. Good job. We are without doubt the most egotistical species ever designed. And we want to be apart from the animals. Well, if animals really aren't beast machines, if they aren't dumb, then we have to consider, I think, more sensitively. What are we? It's to help understand how we came to be what we are that Professor Dwayne Rumba is researching animal intelligence here at Georgia State University in Atlanta. Now the number count is two. By teaching chimps and pygmy bonobos to count and to comprehend, his team is hoping they can teach us lessons. Why is this so important? Why do we need to know whether or not animals can communicate and think? If we understand how areas of the brains work in animals, then we stand a better chance of helping the child who, for whatever reason, has brain damage of higher levels that keeps it from, from achieving things otherwise. Okay, well, here we go. In this laboratory, a chimp named Sherman is being taught the fundamentals of thinking. For each number he's given, he has to click off the correct corresponding number of dots. Here the target number is five, he's picked up three dots, four, five, and he says that's it. Hey, 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 that's a good one, Sherman. That was a good one. You'd have to be a great critic not to want to accept that he acknowledges a number of things. I think you have to be a real chauvinist and say, you know, we, only we humans can think. Only we humans are conscious. I don't see how anyone could watch Sherman do this and, and recognize his celebration and disappointment in accordance with whether or not he's correct or incorrect, even before he scored and not agree that he is a sentient conscious creature. Well, he's, he, he thinks. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. The number is three. Whoops. Four. And he makes a mistake. <laughs> well, to err is to be chimpanzee. Exhibit B in Professor Rumbar's case for the ape is Pansy, who can understand about 200 English words, can complete jigsaws, and play computer games. Okay, now here's a maze that Pansy has never seen before. Put up a maze, for instance, and Pansy, using a joystick, unerringly avoids dead ends and wrong way streets to reach her goal. And she doesn't turn to the left there. She goes to the right and makes it home. Good girl, Pansy! Good girl, Pansy! Now that's complex. It, it takes a child of age five or six in order to be able to do this kind of task as well as she does. I think you've got a soft spot for Pansy. I certainly do. Yes. She used to sleep on my tummy at night when she was a little baby. So, so she, she hasn't been doing that recently. <laughs> Turn around. Sit down. Are you ready? Okay. Kanzi says he's ready. Professor Rumba's wife, Sue, has achieved even more remarkable results. Hey, look. Fred, good job. Are you ready? Kanzi's ready again. Bunny. 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 Good job. This is the okay. most famous Kanzi's chimpanzee ready. in the world. Kanzi is the subject of a book and has been on the cover of Time magazine because he has overturned forever the idea that language is unique to humans. Good job, blackberries. Okay, we're going to have some bubble gum. You did a good job and I'm proud of you. Now let's turn around this way. You even said melon for me. 
And I don't know if you said M&M, I wasn't listening. See, you get a big piece, okay? Kanzi is a fantastic example of a primate understanding language. Without question, Kanzi comprehends more language than any other non-human being in the world. From your research and observations to date, what would be the human equivalent to your best chimp? Well, I think that <clears throat> Sue is right in saying that Kanzi and Pan Benicia comprehend English. They comprehend speech at the level of a three to three and a half year old child, at least. That's conservative. Which goes a long way to dispelling the critics' belief that they're just doing it for food. It should decimate any doubt about animals' capability for language. All right, Kanzi, give me the picture of the tomatoes. Tomatoes. Uh-huh. Wait. Kanzi. In the 30 years they've been working on animal language, the rumbars have had to suffer criticism that they are merely trainers and their animals performers. Kanzi, give me the picture of the clay. The clay, Kanzi. Thank you. So they've had to go to extraordinary lengths to prove they're onto something. Could you put some soap in the water? Here, Sue Rumba uses a welder's helmet to avoid even subconsciously cueing Kanzi as she makes a series of requests he's never heard before. Could you take the TV outdoors? Could you carry the television outdoors, please? Thank you, thank you very, very much. That was a good job. But this is the big breakthrough. TV. Give me TV. Can you pick it up and give it to me? Pick it up. Thank a you. computer designed at the Language Centre which uses what are called lexigrams to help chimps talk to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you talk about that one? Fire. That's right, there is a fire on that TV picture. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. She uses her language to communicate things that she never would have been able to communicate otherwise. The animals do think in terms of these lexigrams. They solve problems in terms of these lexigrams. They will announce what it is that they're going to bring back from another room and then go get it and bring it back through lexigrams. That is impressive. Banana. Shake. Shake. You want to chase to banana? banana. Well, the sentences are crude, but do contain verbs, and they've demonstrated what a powerful tool this computer can be when humans are put at the keyboard. And we've worked with children and young adults who otherwise acquired no symbolic capability, no speech, subjects who had nothing to lose as they went into our, our uh, paradigms of learning. And they did learn upwards of 70, 80, 90 lexigrams, and they could carry on conversations that otherwise they could not. And their mothers and their fathers could communicate them in ways that they could not. It helped them blossom, and they did then try, as never before, to talk. Somehow, from the moment we discovered language in our prehistoric past, we humans have developed a puffed-up conceit that we are the only thinking, feeling beasts on planet Earth. Kanzi, we need you to cut up the apples for us, okay? The team at the Language Research Centre has put a pinprick in that arrogance. And if it means we start treating animals with more respect, they'll count that as their greatest success. I think that one, one of the most marvellous things is to view ourselves as part of the natural world. And that the bonobos and chimpanzees, though not human, have some competencies that indeed we have always worn and presented as our points of great distinction. Hi. She. Chase and hide. Me or Bondo? Bondo, you. She wants you to go chase and hide with her. The go truth ahead. of the matter is that biologically we are related to animals. Biologically we share 98.4% DNA with the bonobo and the chimpanzee. We are more closely related to them and they to us than they are to gorillas. Are we trying to make them more like us? 
Well, no, we really aren't. We're trying to understand the science, the relationship between brain and behavior and competence. We're not trying to make people out of them. We wouldn't be so cruel to them.